is the World of Sports Network presentation. We got to talk about the quarterback carousel that's going on in the NFL right now. We got to talk about the first blockbuster trade of the 2021 offseason, man. The first blockbuster trade, and it's none other than, I'm not even surprised, man. The Los Angeles Rams went and traded for the Detroit Lions quarterback, Matthew Stafford. Now, Rams with less need got, what, two first-round picks? They gave up two first-round picks, a third-round pick, got rid of Jared Goff, and for Matthew Stafford. Now, this is a great move for the Los Angeles Rams. An outstanding move for the Los Angeles Rams because it is an upgrade at a position of need. Because Jared Goff, no disrespect to Jared Goff, but my man is just average. Jared Goff is an average quarterback in the NFL. Average. He's closer to being a backup than he is to being a, a top tier starter. You know what I'm saying? Jared Goff is really closer to being a backup than he is. So I understand that. Matthew Stafford now, he has above average abilities in the NFL. Above average abilities. You know what I'm saying? Now, is, is overall, with his ability, uh, I personally think Matthew Stafford is an average quarterback. You know what I'm saying? He's an average quarterback with above average ability. So first of all, how this is going to enhance the the, uh, the Rams. How does this help the Rams? The Rams got to take shots downfield. The Rams need quarterback that. They need a guy that can stand in that pocket and, and when the wind blows, don't fumble the ball because we know Jared Goff, dog. Jared Goff, he threw a flood of balls, man. Jared Goff don't have no arm strength. His balls, we, we seen it, man. You all see the same thing I see. Half the time he throw the ball 30 yards, it's, it's, it's just fluttering. So I get it. You know what I'm saying? And Gar Jared Goff got that. He got that little... I don't know about the kid, to be real with you. I really don't know about Jared Goff. Like, I don't know if I, if I was a, a Ram, if it's somebody I would be excited to play for. You know what I'm saying? Jared Goff look like he's nuts. I know I don't, I know you don't need to be uh, somebody like the Goo, just loud and just uh, be all that. But as a leader, do you ever look at Jared Goff as a leader for that organization, for that team? I don't see that. I don't really see that. And I think Sean McVay did an outstanding job in leading and helping and holding Jared Goff's hands this last few years. Outstanding job, man. Now, he got Matthew Stafford. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew Stafford, man. I mean, Matthew Stafford is like the biggest shiny object, bro. You know, got the big arm. Big arm, Matthew. He can make every throw in the book. Now, my man is coming to the NFC West, bro. Matthew Stafford is coming to the NFC West, bro. He's leaving Detroit. He's leaving the NFC North. Bye-bye, A-Rod. He's like, A-Rod, bye. You've been whooping my butt for how many years? Bye-bye. He's like, Kirk Cousin, bye. He's like, Mr. Trubisky, bye. So now the Google got to give you a real, real reason why. Why? The Rams give a... They, they basically gave the house up for a guy that's only worth a condo. Like, Matthew Stafford is the condo. He's not a house. There's a difference between a condo and a house. Major difference. A condo is nice. It's very nice. You could do a lot of things in a, in, a, in a condo. Trust. You could have a beautiful view. You could have all that in a condo. But we all know there's a difference between a condo and a house. When you're in a house, you're more spacious. You got more room. You do more things by yourself. You don't have your neighbors right next to you. You don't have that. Matthew Stafford, the Los Angeles Rams gave up their house. Their beautiful house. So now I live in a condo. In my opinion, that is called downgrading. It's called downgrading. When you have a mansion and now you're going to sell that house so you can freaking live in a, uh, in a condo, that's downgrading, man. And the reason why I got to tell you about Matthew Stafford and his downgrading because Matthew Stafford, he's very slick, man. But the guru, that's why I'm not with those national media and all that nonsense. Because this dude is slick, dog. With all this rhetoric going on all of a sudden, oh, the Rams got Matthew Stafford. They're finna be a Super Bowl contender. Dude, the Rams were a Super Bowl contender without Matthew Stafford. Just FYI. Without Matthew Stafford. 
let me tell you a little thing about Matthew Stafford because everybody right now is kissing and loving Matthew Stafford. Dude, Matthew Stafford, I'm trying to tell you all this, L.A. I know it's this city of glamour. You know what I'm saying? Matthew Stafford don't have no winning bone in his body, dawg. My man Matthew Stafford don't know how to win no football games, ladies and gentlemen. People used to tell me, I have this debate with many people. They're like, oh, guru, oh, oh, Matthew Stafford, look at the Lions organization. Nobody could win for the Lions. Look at the, uh, uh, Barry Sanders retired. Megatron retired. This is a terrible organization. But you know what y'all said? Y'all named me a receiver and y'all named me a freaking running back. Y'all name me a receiver, y'all name me a running back. Y'all know when it comes down to this game, the Detroit Lions pick Matthew Stafford number one overall pick for a reason, dog. For a reason. There's certain things about people, dog. It's, it's in life, dog. In life, there's some, there's people that are winners and guys that's just average. There's nothing wrong with that. There's winners and there's guys that's just, they're just, eh. I'm not going to call Matthew Stafford a loser. I'm not, because he's not a loser. But I know one thing I could say about Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford is not a winner. He's not a loser, but I know damn right he's closer to a loser than he is closer to a winner. That's what I'm getting at. Matthew Stafford, overall record, 74-90-1. Overall record, 74-90-1. That is a losing record. But yes, you know what I'm saying? I get it. When you have the first overall pick, I don't expect your team to be good. I get it. So you're going to go through some obstacles and stuff, dog. But one thing I do know about life, ladies and gentlemen. One thing I do know about life, man. And I know about life because I live life. <laughs> I could talk about life because I'm alive. You know what I'm saying? One thing I do know about life, man. A winner always wins. If you're a winner in life, dog, it don't matter what happens. You don't matter where you go. It don't matter what the situation is. It don't matter your environment. It don't matter your circumstances. You're going to win. It's just like the kid who, who come from a broken home. All oh, my the parents are abusive. Alcoholics. You know what I'm saying? Abusive alcoholics. I mean, the environment is terrible. But yet... You see kids strive and get out of that environment and out of that situation. Trust me, I know I'm one of them kids, dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm one of them kids came out of a situation that you always think, oh, I was born in a situation where you all think there's no way you can get out, dog. But when you're a winner, when you are a winner, it don't matter if you're in Antarctica, it don't matter if you're in Alaska, it don't matter if you're in, in Beirut, a winner is going to win. Matthew Stafford is going to Los Angeles Rams. This guy is not a winner. So now all of a sudden, he's going to know how to win? This dude has been playing for, he's 32 years old. And by the way, happy early birthday, man. Your birthday, Matthew Stafford's birthday is next week, man. So, hey, actually, his birthday is Super Bowl Sunday, actually. Yeah, February 7th. Happy early birthday, Matthew Stafford, man. You know, um, but one thing about a winner, winner wins, dog. I'm going to show you all an example of winners, regardless of your situation. Because what winners do is they, they got resolves. They got perseverance, man. They have no legitimate excuse. They don't blame their environment. All I hear in the media this last week about Matthew Stafford, oh, it's the Lions. They were a the bad organization. Brah. Brah. If you're a winner, you change the organization. You change the culture of the organization because that's what winners do. Winners infuse. It's just like love. Love always overtake hate. I don't care how hate is. If you have true love in your heart, you, if you have true love, you could go anywhere. You go to a war-torn country. If you have true love, that would always take side over hate. If you are a winner, if you are a true winner, it don't matter where you go, you will win. Example, Alex Smith. Alex Smith is what you call a winner. You never say, oh, Alex Smith got a strong arms. Alex Smith this and that, bro. Alex Smith does everywhere he goes, he wins. Alex Smith played at Utah. Y'all remember Utah? 
Alex Smith went 11 and 0 at Utah with no talent, son, because he's a winner. Matthew Stafford had AJ Green, no Sean Moreno. He had the number one team in Georgia. And he did not win. He had an outstanding coach in Mark Rick. He had it all. He did not win. Because you know what? I don't believe this dude. He, I don't think he has winning blood. He don't have win. He don't even know how to win. I don't think he knows how to spell winner. I don't think he knows. He spelled winner with a W-E. That's Matthew Stafford. That's how he spelled winner. He's not. He's a winner. Not a winner. Major difference, son. And like, look, I got to tell this. Alex Smith is one of my perfect examples of a winner, man. It's just my perfect example. The man went to San Francisco, he wins, and they kick him out. He went to Kansas City, he wins, they kick him out. And the man went to the Washington football team. This man broke his leg, dog. This man broke everything of his body, my dude. You talk about his circumstance, and look what the Washington football team did this year, my dude. Because when you're a winner, it don't matter your situation. It don't matter your circumstances. It don't matter about I don't have a coaching staff. Oh, I don't have a I don't have a uh, GM. I don't have this. You know what winners do? Winners hide all of that. That's what winners do. They deodorant all of that. That's why you're great. That's why they call you a winner. That's why not everybody could be a winner. Not everybody has that winning bone because it's uniquely different, man. Once again, I'll take, give another example. Thomas, Thomas Brady. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers didn't make the playoff, and I don't even know God knows when, bruh. I don't even know the last time the Tampa Bay Buccaneers made the playoff, dog. And what happened? What happened? Tom Brady came there in the Super Bowl because Tom Brady knows how to win. I could go on and go on for days about winning bones. My man, Baker Mayfield. We could say what we want to say about Baker Mayfield, everything you could say. But one thing you cannot say about Baker Mayfield, Baker Mayfield is a winner. Everywhere Baker Mayfield's been, he won, dawg. Baker Mayfield just took one of the worst franchises. Y'all keep talking about Detroit franchises. Bruh, did y'all see what Baker Mayfield just did, dawg? Baker Mayfield just did the unthinkable. Did Cleveland Browns won a playoff game on the road, dawg? Y'all got me spared. Look, man, I don't even want to get mad at this dude, dog. But I'm tired of this fake rhetoric, dog. With Matthew Stafford is this dog this. No, I'm going to tell you one thing, dog. Matthew Stafford is going to go to the Rams and he's going to be the same old Matthew Stafford. The same old Matthew Stafford, dog. Ain't nothing going to change, man. Ain't nothing going to change. Matthew Stafford was the third best quarterback in the division in Detroit. The third best quarterback, my man Kirk Cousin came in there. We talk about, we laugh at Kirk Cousin. We laugh at this. We laugh at all of that. But Kirk Cousin is a better quarterback than uh, Matthew Stafford. And that's dead ass. And if you have a problem with that, come see me and talk to me about that, bro. If you are going to sit there because this is going to throw the ball far, I can tell you one thing. Matthew Stafford record is 74 and 90 and 1. Kirk Cousin, who we laugh at, is 51 and 51. Kirk Cousin is a 500 quarterback, dog. <laughs> Kirk Cousins is a 500 quarterback, dog. 500 quarterback. Because you know what? You can say what we want to say about Kirk. We can laugh at Kirk. He can't win primetime games. He's owing this and blah, 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 blah. But you know one thing? Kirk Cousins is 6 and 0 versus Matthew Stafford. Dead. I'm dead. 6 and 0 versus Matthew Stafford. We talking about, dog. We talk. We're we talking about Matthew Stafford. We're talking about Matthew Stafford. And you guys in LA think y'all got something? Y'all think y'all got something? Y'all got bamboozled, dog. Oh, I seen this game before, man. I seen this game, dog. Y'all just got, hey, y'all just got bamboozled. Y'all just got sold the wrong type of drugs, dog. You know what I'm saying? Y'all think y'all gonna get that nice indica weed? Nah, dog. Y'all got that booth. It might smell good. It smell good and look good, but when you smoke that shit. Nah, that's some doo-doo, man. Matthew Stafford has been fooling. He's, a, he's been fooling guys in the NFL. He's been fooling experts. He's been fooling fans like you. He's been fooling you guys. But you know what? As the ordinary truth serum guy, as the guy that brings out the truth about players and those holes, Bob, I'm here to help you all out, man. 
Matthew Stafford in 10 years went to the playoff three times, dog. Three damn times. And I don't even know how. You know what? I know because my man Jim Caldwell. Thank goodness for Jim Caldwell. And Jim Bob Cooter, baby. Jim Bob, where you at? Stand up. Jim Bob. In playoff appearances, Matthew Stafford is 0 and 3. 0 and 3. What I tell you about winners and losers. If you're a winner, you don't have a zero, dog. It just don't happen. I don't care who you are. If you win, you figure it out. We laugh at Kirk Cousin. Kirk Cousin is one in four in the playoff. Kirk Cousin won more game in the playoff than Matthew Stafford. Yes, that's true. Mitch Trubisky. Mitch Trubisky owns Matthew Stafford. Like, dude, like, where is this ready? Just because this dude could throw the ball far? Just because he's a, he, he don't disrespect the media. He's a nice guy. He's a nice man. He's a grown ass man. I'll give you that. He's a grown man. He's a professional. Matthew Stafford is a true professional. I dare you agree. But for me to sit right here, man, and I'm so pissed off that the Rams and Les Need, who needs to lose it? You know what? I'm putting it out right now. Les Need will be out of a job in two and a half years, dog. Because this move they just made is the beginning of the end for genius Sean McVay. My man Les Snead, get the hell out of here, dog. Matthew Stafford is coming to the NFC West, and he's going to be the third best quarterback in the NFC West. Matthew Stafford is going to be the third best quarterback. Jared Goff was the third best quarterback. Matthew Stafford is going to be still the third best quarterback. You tell me what just happened here, dog. You tell me what just happened here, dog. My man Kyle Shanahan is going to beat Matthew Stafford and uh, uh, Sean McVay with, um, I don't care who, the, who, who they have at quarterback. They could, I could be the quarterback for the 49ers and beat Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford next year, dog. Kyler Murray, better than Matthew Stafford. And we all know who owns the division, Russell Wilson. So y'all little LA guys, I know y'all liking it because the Lakers won the ship. The Dodgers won the ship. And now the Rams think they finna win the ship. Bruh, the difference is, though, the difference is, L.A., LeBron is a winner, dog. <laughs> LeBron is a winner, dog. They are winners. Matthew Stafford is one of the greatest stat stuffer to ever play football. Matthew Stafford is similar to James Harden, man. You, see, you look at James Harden, bruh. Look at James Harden. Do y'all see any winning bones in James Harden? I don't see no winning bones in James Harden. But you know what? That man James Harden, who, hey, he looks good, though. You know what I'm saying? Who do they blame for James Harden's situation? Because Matthew Stafford is the James Harden of the NFL right now, bruh. The greatest stat stuffer in the history of the game. But that can't worth a damn. Because you know what? You don't trust him. I don't trust him. Let's just be real, dog. I got one question to y'all before I go on break real quick, man. In the last drive, if we have a minute left in football, or a minute, left, a minute and a half left in the ball game, the Rams got the ball, and they down by three. And Matthew Stafford got the ball. Do you see any fear in any defensive coordinator's face? I've never heard any defensive coordinator, any NFL player with a minute left in the ball game. Matthew Stafford got the ball in his hand. And they don't, and they feel, they feel any certain way. Because you know why? They know the same thing I know. Matthew Stafford don't have no winning bones in his body. The only thing Matthew Stafford does great is he's going to put that stats box there. You look at the box stats, you look at the numbers, that man is a Hall of Fame stat stuffer. You talking about the ultimate Hall of Fame stat stuffers? The number one Hall of Fame stat stuffer of my era is none other than Matthew Stafford. So that's how we start this show right there, producer. That's how we start.